welcome to a special Pokemon edition of the Code Wolf. Today, we're going to explore how to turn this into this. So essentially, this app allows you to recreate or evolve primitive Pokemon sprites into amazing 3D renders using the OpenAI Dolly 3 AI model and some custom .NET code. This app also hooks up to an open source Pokemon web service to pull in every single Pokemon ever made, which means you don't have to worry about your favorite Pokemon being left out. Now, I'm honestly not really sure why I even built this app or what the end goal is, but I do think it's a fun example of how we can use AI image generation in custom apps and demonstrates how simple it really can be. So hit those like and subscribe buttons to stay tuned and let's go catch them all. Just one more quick reminder to please hit subscribe to support the channel. We've got plenty more cloud AI and coding content coming, and be sure to check out the other AI content that's already here if you're interested in that topic. All right, so I have this custom app running on my computer that I built, and it allows you to request any set of Pokemon by their respective generation. I think there's nine generations right now, but if I'm wrong, just correct me in the comments. So you can request any of those by clicking on one of these buttons. And these Pokemon come from the Pokey API, so I really want to give a shout out here. This is an open source REST API that gives extensive Pokemon information, everything you'd ever want, and maybe more than you'd ever want. But this has been a huge help, and it's a great project, so check that out. But this allows us to pull in any generation of Pokemon, like I was saying. So I'll click on Generation 1, and you can see immediately Pokemon are starting to pop in. But I want to talk about this a little bit more before we get into that. So you can see for step number two, it says after the results load, click the evolve button on each Pokemon to see an AI enhanced version. And it's still loading in some more Pokemon as we scroll through here. I think there's 151 Pokemon in generation one or something like that. So if we scroll through here, these are Pokemon that I have already evolved. So you can see there's this evolve button in the lower left. So you can click that on any Pokemon to get a new image of it. Now, I've already taken care of a lot of these, as you can see, but if we keep scrolling through here, there's some Pokemon that are still the original sprites. So these come in from the API with those retro sprites, but then you can immediately just click the Evolve button, and it's going to go out to OpenAI's Dolly model and try to generate like an awesome 3D CGI version of each Pokemon. And you can actually queue up multiple of these at a time, so you can see it's working on those. And it now it created this cool version of Oddish, which I'm not that familiar with, but I think this looks pretty cool. So if you're happy with the result, you can click save, and that's gonna say that it was saved to your local computer, and then that'll be yours for next time the app restarts. Now, this is kind of a good example set here because it highlights a couple issues and a couple strengths. So I was happy with this first one. I think this is sort of in the style that we're looking for. But I'm not happy with the second one. This is not what we want. So we can just click this button again, and you can kind of endlessly request a new version of that Pokemon until you get something that you like, and then you can hit save. So I'm kind of mixed feelings about this. It's not necessarily in the art style we like, but it's kind of a cool look. But I'm going to regenerate that. And so those will run kind of asynchronously in the background. And you can see here are some more that I've already generated and saved. So we could maybe request another one down here. And if we wait for a moment, these new ones will pop in. So I don't like that at all. Uh, so we can hit evolve again. Now, this is something I've noticed with the Dolly model is that sometimes that AI model will give you exactly what you're looking for. And sometimes it's just way off. And that's why I've designed this to be able to request multiple times on any given Pokemon. So I'm fairly happy with this one. So we'll just say save. But even after you've saved it, you can always request another one. And these will be stored with the app. So, for example, I actually like this one that came through. So I'll save this. And I'll just give it a second to see if this last one pops in here. And after a second, it actually gave us something that I'm much happier with. So I'll click Save again. Now, if I were to refresh this page, it kind of resets the app. But when we go to load our Gen 1 again, now if we scroll through here, it's going to persist those ones that we just created. So they're quite a ways down here, but see there's our three saved items, but you can still request new ones. So if we go back up to the top here, we could also say maybe we wanna request Gen 2. So now it'll say, here's Pokemon Generation 2. I've already saved a few of these, but not as many as Generation 1. So here's some that we could still generate. So we could say Evolve. 
And the first time you run this app, none of these will have these fancy AI generated ones. They'll all just look like these default sprites. But I also just wanna call out kind of the detail level or the quality of some of these. So you can actually open these in a new tab and these are like full size high res images. So some of these are actually very impressive that come back from Dolly. And some of them, like we saw before, are not at all what you want. So it's kind of just this game of requesting images until you're happy with one. Now on the back end, I've sort of created a generic prompt that we send to Dolly that tries to get the best result, but, but doesn't always turn out exactly what we want. And so we can always retry. And just as one more example, we can of course load Gen 3. And here's some really cool images that it generated for the first row and a second row here as well, but the rest of these I haven't gone through yet. So, so if you set up this app, you can kind of go through here and start creating your own. So I'm gonna provide this app out on GitHub with just the code only. And if you're comfortable with that, you can run it. Or like I said, I could create a separate video that kind of goes through in more depth how to get this going technically. Now, I also want to mention that this is using Dolly 3. So that's an open AI model that excels at image generation. So it says, Dolly 3 understands nuance and detail to translate ideas into exceptionally accurate images. And a lot of times that's true. Like we saw, it can generate some really impressive images. And the code to get this working is actually pretty minimal. So if I were to just quickly pop over here into Visual Studio, we're essentially just making a request to the Dolly 3 OpenAI model. And you can kind of look through that yourself if you're interested in the code. Again, this will be out on GitHub. This is also using Blazor and Mudblazor to kind of create that nice responsive UI and handle some of that async code. But I have other videos on my channel that show how to set up connections to AI services and Dolly really isn't that different. So it's just using an AI client again to make that call. So I'd recommend checking out some of those other videos for getting started with AI on my channel if you wanna see how to hook this stuff up. But this project will also be out on GitHub and I can make another video if necessary. So go ahead and pull that project down if you're interested in it. Otherwise, I just think it's really cool. Um, it's really interesting to see what the AI comes up with. And again, some of these results are actually really impressive. So for example, I really like these generation one Pokemon. I think these turned out really nicely. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the Code Wolf.